Hello everybody, it's uh, Carl again with uh, Meet the Devs. I'm uh, the production director here at CGA. And today my uh, guest is Jen McLean. And um, let's just get right into it and we will welcome Jen to the show. Hi Jen, how are you? Hi Carl, thanks so much for having me. Oh, no problem. Um, so Jen, um, we'll just start off with a little background. Why don't you just uh, tell us how you got into the video game industry and technology as, as a start? Yeah, so I have been a gamer since I was seven and got an Atari 2600 and spent hours and hours playing Pitfall and finally got the high score where you took the actual picture of the high score and you mailed it off to Activision and they mailed you back a certificate and a patch and it was one of my proudest accomplishments from my childhood. I spent a lot of time with Ultima 4, a lot of, lot of time on the Infocom mysteries, and in college, I found out about quite possibly the best part-time job for a college student ever, which was being a playtester at Microprose Software. I spent four years at Microprose. Mm -hmm. I got paid to playtest Civilization, which was as awesome as it sounds, <laughs> and after Microprose, I left and went to AOL and held a number of games positions there. Mm -hmm. went to Comcast and ran their games business for them, and then went to a number of small independent developers, and I'm now the executive director of the ITDA and the ITDA Foundation. Okay, so that's uh, that's quite the uh, the space of time that we just covered there, <laughs> uh, Jen from Seven to Jen now <laughs> IGDA. Um, so you uh, you gave us your title there. So what is the the role? Um, that you play at the IGDA. What is what is that exactly, executive director? I'm essentially the president and CEO of the IGDA. And I work with our board to help figure out how we can help game developers have more sustainable and fulfilling careers. And then once we've decided on a strategy, I implement that strategy with our team, including mm -hmm. Tristan Hightower, who is our amazing director of operations and uh, the, the amazing volunteer leaders that we have in our community. Yeah, I've uh, I've met Tristan a few times. She uh, was at our last show in Seattle, and she was very valuable in in help and and we really enjoyed the uh, the experience of IGDA and uh, the the uh, things that you guys have brought to the community. So I I have to say thank you to both you and Tristan for those things. Um, so what what did you say your area of expertise is? What is what is it that people come to you for? Professionally, I've spent a lot of time in the business area of game development, figuring out how to make a company successful, how to pitch an idea, how to do business development. And what I've done at the IGDA is take that experience and those skills and really think about how I can use those skills to help make game development a, a career that somebody can have for their entire life. Mm -hmm. So right now, one of the biggest problems that game Uh, we got a climate of the industry. There are very frequent lay layoffs. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's there was a little bit of a pause in your video there for a second. So, um, can you just start back at you know the the problems the game industry people are following or having right now? Yep. So right now, it's easier to become a game developer than ever before. We have amazing tools like Unity and Unreal Lumberyard that make it really easy or relatively easy to develop a game mm -hmm. and of course we have some fantastic educational programs that help give uh, aspiring game developers the skills that they need to be a great game developer right unfortunately it is harder to be successful as a game developer than it's ever been before there is insane competition on any distribution platform out there yep. and that means that while you might have the technical skills to succeed as a game developer from a business perspective, it's a lot harder. And the IGDA's mission, and where really my, my superpower is, is figuring out how we can help both individual developers and their companies be more successful. Because at the end of the day, that helps the individual game developer, that mm -hmm. helps the industry, and that creates an industry where everyone can thrive and succeed. Right. So you're dealing with things on the business side as well as like issues like crunching and, you know, trying to have like family work balance and those types of things. 
Exactly. Okay. So things like discoverability and career pathing mm -hmm. and how to recover from layoffs and how to help support remote working staff. Because yeah. if you're in a two career household, you may not be able to move every two or three years. Right. And you're dealing the whole gamut from like large AAA studios all the way down to the small indie developers and everybody in between. And yeah, so yeah. it's a it's a large swath of the industry to uh, try and take care of. And, and it's I'm, I'm glad you're so excited about it. I can feel like the excitement coming through the uh, interview. You know, you're you're just kind of glowing about, you know, what you do. And, and that's that's really nice. I, I appreciate that. And I'm sure a lot of other people do. Um, so. If you were uh, actually, let's back up one. I was going to jump this question, but how do you how do things differ for developers than when you were developing games? Besides, you know, kind of the challenges you already went through. Like, what else is kind of different? Yeah, I think one of the great things about game development today is that there are a lot of tools out there that help developers be successful. Um, whether it's third-party software that takes care of a lot of the, the nasty issues like physics engines, you know, for example, Havoc, um, or just the amazing support that you get when you use Unity or Unreal 4 or Lumberyard, that makes a huge difference in the, the complexity mm -hmm. of game development. I think agile development methodology is also a really great change to the industry. And then most importantly, I think developers are much more aware of the need for best practices in game development and much more interested in sharing what they do. Mm -hmm. So you have people like Clinton Keith and Keith Fuller who go around and really have built a life in helping developers be better at the craft of game development. Right. Those are, those are amazing resources for the industry to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so... If you were uh, still in game development, what type of games industry, you know, would you would you go for? What would you get back into if you were going to do it full time again? Uh, I am a huge Bioware fangirl, <laughs> and I would love to make story driven RPGs. You know, for what it's worth, single player games are not dead. Mm -hmm. There is a huge market for an outstanding narrative product. Um, and I, I, for me, those are the games that I just love. Yeah. And that's not to, to say anything against the other amazing genres out there. I've been playing a ton of Civ Six still, and Mini Metro is my new addiction. But there is nothing quite like a Renegade Interrupt in Mass Effect. So what about Destiny 2? You have started playing that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have been avoiding that like the plague because of its addictive <laughs> properties. I just started playing it, so yes, I uh, I feel that pain. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, what do you think the social responsibility is for game creators? You know, do we have a duty in our game style and interactions? So overall, when I think about what the IGDA really wants to accomplish, we want a world where everybody loves to play video games and mm -hmm. everyone has a great experience playing games. Now that doesn't mean that everyone will love every game and that's okay, but I want us to have an industry where we make, as a total industry, we make games that every person on the planet can engage with and have a wonderful experience with. And that means thinking about things like accessibility. That means thinking about things like inclusivity. Mm -hmm. But it also means this amazing big goal of making entertainment that delights every single person on the planet. I think that's fantastic. You know, and, and I think that's a lofty goal and we can draw some uh, correlations to things like the movies and stuff. You know, it used to be you had kids movies and you had adult movies and everything else. But, you know, I think Pixar was the one who really broke that barrier when they came out with like Shrek and those things that were really entertaining for the whole gamut. It didn't matter really what you were into if you had kids, if you didn't have kids, you know, it, it was entertaining for everybody. And it was an amazing piece of IP and, and creative uh uh, sauce, I guess I'll call it, you know, that they came out with. And, and I think that games can do that as well. So I, I, I can understand your vision. So um, is there anything else that's new and exciting with the IGDA and what you're doing in 2018 that you want to tell us about? We'll be spending a lot of time figuring out and 
implementing plans to not only support individual developers, but also the IGDA's chapters and SIGs. So we have over 200 chapters and special interest groups around the world, mm -hmm. from every place to Des Moines, Iowa, to Iran. Right. And that's an amazing tool to help developers come together and meet in their geographic communities. Then we also have our special interest groups. And our special interest groups address issues like virtual reality and, and augmented reality. Mm -hmm. They also work on diversity issues. They work on things like credit standards and business and legal best practices. So with our special interest groups, we, we really want to create tools and resources that help a game developer with any professional question they might have. And I'm really excited about expanding our support for those chapters and special interest groups because at the end of the day, we are all in this together. Mm -hmm. I don't believe game development is a zero-sum game. I believe that the more games that we make and the better those games are, the more people will play games and the more successful we all will be. Now, I, I'm going to go off topic a little bit here just based on what you just said, as is games are not a zero-sum game, but I think that there's a lot of... Um, selfishness in the industry in certain areas where they're exceeding expectations and whatnot and it's creating an environment where it's harder for consumers and video gamers to connect i'm not going to name any names or f platforms or anything but there's this this situation where a lot of um, developers and consumers are having a hard time connecting and I hear it from both sides. So I've had meetings in Thailand with game developers all around the world, just like you have that same interaction. And I get a lot of feedback from the developers, like, you know, it's discoverability, which we mentioned earlier, is a huge problem. And not everybody's playing the same tune as you and I want to have played. And it's, it seems like there's got to be something that has to break there soon in order for that zero-sum game to be broken and, and to get more people and developers and games for that cycle to be a more positive one, I should say. Do you see that the same way as I do, or am I out in the night there? So I think one of the nice things about being in the games industry for 25, 25 years is that I've lived through these cycles. Mm -hmm. and this has happened before, it will happen again. You know, we are reaching a point where it may cost millions of dollars to launch a game on a mobile platform, and that's frankly just not sustainable. Right. What happens is that you have developers go and search for other platforms, and other platforms rise up, and that's, that is painful and really difficult for us while we are living in it, but it boosts creativity, it answers the discoverability issue, and it means that at the end of the day, we will end up a more healthy industry. My goal is to minimize that pain as much as possible and give every developer an equal shot at being successful, regardless of money, regardless of location, regardless of geography. That's going to be really hard to do, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try because there are so many amazing creative talents in this industry. We don't want anyone's creative voice to be overlooked mm -hmm. because they, they don't have that multi-million dollar publishing budget or marketing budget because right. they happen to live in the wrong country or because they may have chosen the wrong platform to develop on initially. Cool. Great answer. Thank you. Um, so, you know, the IGDA and CGA, we've uh, collaborated on a few occasions before and, and um, we found it very productive on our side. And in January, we're going to be collaborating a little more at uh, Disneyland. Can you tell us a little bit about what the IGDA will be doing there with us? You know, I feel like this is the setup for a joke, and I hope I'm not the first person to say, you know, hey, you, you've just been named executive director of the IGDA. What are you doing, Jen? I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> you are the first for that joke <laughs> on my show anyway. So. <laughs> the CGA has been such a wonderful partner to the IGDA over the years. We've co-hosted the IGDA's Leadership Summit at, with the um, Casual Connect in the past, uh, and most recently, the CGA has hosted a mentor cafe with the IGDA. Mm -hmm. and we'll be doing that again this year. Essentially, what a mentor cafe is, is it allows aspiring developers and developers who may be earlier in their career to come get matched with an amazing mentor who has significant and deep expertise in their area of concern. Mm -hmm. And then we also have time for essentially freeform mentoring. So you may be at the Mentor Cafe and you may have a 
a difficult technical question about graphics engineering, mm -hmm. but you may also see somebody there who you know has great expertise in launching mobile games or launching console games. So after you were matched with the mentor that you requested to answer that that uh, very deep question, you might go up to the person from marketing or publishing and say, hey, can you help me with this question? Right. Can you help me with that? So we're, we try to give a really great directed experience for mm -hmm. part of the mentor cafe, where again, the, the younger, less experienced or aspiring game developers have a chance to tap on literally hundreds of years of experience across the mentors in the mentor cafe, mm -hmm. but then also get a chance to have some more freeform conversations and to really be more opportunistic about seeking out advice that uh, the mentors might have. One of the great things about this community and about the attendees of Casual Connect is everybody is so generous with their time and expertise. And it makes a really great experience for the mentees because they have concentrated in this room amazing brain power who is there literally just to help them. Yeah. And I think that's the Mentor Cafe is a great fit with with what I feel like is the Casual Connect atmosphere. You know, I feel like, you know, it's it's a friends and family almost gathering at, at a lot of times. I've I've opened a number of the Casual Connects shows over the years. And, you know, one of my favorite topics when I open the show is is how welcoming everybody is and how open and friendly and, you know, and it's it's almost like a reunion going to, you know, just people that you've known for decades in the industry and stuff. And then they're so welcoming of, of the new people who come in as well. And the Mentor Cafe, I feel, fits right in with that atmosphere. So I, I really appreciate you guys uh, working with us on that and uh, bringing that uh um, effort to uh, all these aspiring new developers in the industry. So thank you again for that. Um, and that's getting pretty much to the end of what I was planning to talk about today. If there's anything you felt like you wanted to add or talk about, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear from you, from you um, and uh, what other ideas you have for the future. Yeah, we're really looking forward to attending Casual Connect in January. Uh, and again, not just because it's going to be at Disneyland. Uh, <laughs> I've been at probably five or six different casual connects over my career. And like you said, it's, it's such a great conference. Everyone is really welcoming. There's amazing support for indie developers there. Um, it's just, it's, it's such a fantastic group of people and really gets me excited about that industry as a whole and, and how we can support everybody in the industry to have more sustainable and fulfilling careers. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jen. And uh, you have a great day in Boston and hopefully it doesn't get too cold on you today. Thanks so much, Carl. Okay. Bye-bye for now. Bye.